Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some what I would think would be concerning news. First up, Robinhood restricts crypto trading due to extraordinary market conditions. And this was after they shut everything down because of Wall Street bets and everything that was going on with GameStop. So now Robinhood is taking that all the way into our market. And I got to tell you, it's uh, not looking good. And this is why you should not use Robinhood for a plethora of reasons. First of all is because they're doing some illegal shady things. And second of all, that's not really cryptocurrency. That's paper crypto that you're buying. On top of that, we also have a nice little piece where Ripple and CEO Brad Garlinghouse face another lawsuit over XRP crypto being a security and why this one is uh, its pretty laughable when you look at it, but when you peel it all back, you can see the tidal wave that is potentially coming. So we'll go over those two pieces, but first, let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So uh, first of all, it is uh, congratulations, we made it to Saturday, somehow. It's 9 a.m., January 30th, El Paso, Texas time, and here is what we have. So uh, Bitcoin had a little bit of a rally, and that could be because of news. And I've said this before, and I will say it again. It is sentiment and news that really move this market right now. But now as time goes on, it could all change. We could be more like the traditional markets, but right here, it's all news. And if you have something like a little Elon Musk action or a little Ray Dalio thing going on or a little Wall Street bets talking about Dogecoin, well, that's just news and that's what moves the market so far. So we were up uh, we were up quite a bit, almost 37,000, retraced back to 34,000. And uh, that is just the, the normalcy or normalcy for uh, crypto markets. Ethereum is down 2%, but still at 1361, it's pretty good. Tell this, tell you, nobody cares. Uh, XRP, I cannot say it's pegged at the quarter. Now it is at 40 cents, so it is up, it is up 40% to 40 cents and 36% for the seven day average. I thought personally that what was going on with, uh, with XRP was that uh, it was going to have a real hard time after all the different cryptos or crypto uh, exchanges were, were stopping the trading, but I was wrong. I'm happy to say I was wrong, and here we are. Uh, Polkadot down 4%. Everything else is pretty much this is just a, a weird day. Ups and downs. Weekends are the tough parts. Sundays are always a big dips, and then Mondays there's always like a little bit of a rebound. Not always, but uh, what it is. Uh, let's see what else we have. 20% for a Uniswap. Let me change this. Uh, wow, 280% for Dogecoin. <laughs> Congratulations, Dogecoin holders, if you could sell it. This is what's going on in the market. We know what the market is. Let's get into a serious topic. Um, if you own Dogecoin, you had it on Voyager, you weren't too happy yesterday, and neither was I. Because what had happened was Voyager had an issue where it went down. And on this channel, you know I love Voyager. You know, I talk about the VGX token and some will say, ah, you, know, you shouldn't talk about it so much because you're shilling Voyager. I'm like, well, I talk about Bitcoin all the time and Ethereum. Am I shilling those two? Yes, exactly. You know why? Because I believe in both of those. Everything on my portfolio is what I believe in. If I didn't believe in it, I wouldn't talk about it. And that's why I think that Voyager is still going to $30 in 2021. That's just how I see it. So what happened yesterday, let me do a close up real quick. What happened yesterday was this. We know that it went down. Coinbase went down, Kraken went down, I think Gemini went down. Now we see some things with Robinhood, that's Robin, whatever. So all these different exchanges went down and there is a difference between uh, going down because you can't make the, the orders and there's a difference between entry points because there are so many people flooding in. And in reality, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's, if it's one or the other. Down is down, right? So. When you go and you have a bunch of Dogecoin, like I had a lot of, Do I had a lot of Dogecoin. I, had re I really for totally forgot about it because it was on my ledger. And I was like, man, I got a lot of Doge. I was like, ah, oh, I should probably you know, take a little bit of profits. Uh, like my friend CJ says, he's like, hey, nobody ever went broke uh, taking profits. And it's a pretty good, uh, pretty good statement. So with Voyager, you know, people were, I mean, yesterday's video, uh, what we talked about, uh, we were talking about the different exit strategies that we have. And that was... Let me pull this up. I just talked about everything that I'm going to do as far as moving things around as far as assets. And in that video, it was probably, I'd say 50% or so. It was all about, oh, it's not coming up. It was all about the different comments, which was all about Voyager. 
Rob, what's going on Voyager? Why is it down? What's going on? You told me it wasn't like Coinbase. You said it was different. You said this. You're right. I did say that. And guess what? It still went down. So what the heck happened? Well, this is what happened. And I'm going to read this, but I'm not making excuses. This is what it is. Voyager app, and this was at 11.53 p.m., but it had been down, up and down the whole day, which is really frustrating. The Voyager app is now back online and trading has resumed. I'd like to thank everybody for customer service. All funds were kept secure. And I will say this, at least over there on Twitter, if, if you follow them on Twitter, it was like there was an update every couple hours. Like your funds are safe. We're just going through maintenance. There's so many people coming in. Your funds are safe. There's just a bunch of people coming in. Your funds are safe. Friends are safe. Like, well, I appreciate that because I remember, I mean, Coinbase, they're not sending you out different things like every couple hours. They're just like, hey, suck it up because we're not going to tell you. We'll tell you when you, you peasants get to it or we get to it. So in this one, you're like, oh, okay. But still, our team is working around the clock to increase our server and database capacity due to the extraordinary growth driving new accounts and volume of the crypto market. This resulted in 100x growth in a 24-hour time period. In one of the other emails, they were talking about they were getting 100 signups per minute, I think it was, which makes sense because if everybody who's at Robinhood realized, I mean, they pretty much just did a scam on everybody, on all the different retail investors, right in front of their faces, and they were pretty much like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do about it? Are you going to give us a fine? We don't care. We're billionaires. And that's what's going to happen. Um, I was on Alex Mashinsky's show yesterday, and he said the same thing. He's like, he's like, they're billionaires. So if you give them a fine of a billion dollars, like, that's okay, because we just saved all our hedge fund managers and everybody else out there. Uh, billions with, a, with an S, plural. So we don't really be able to give a we don't give a care in the world. Go ahead and find us. So when people realize this and they, they hear about Voyager and they hear about Doge and Bitcoin and everything else, like, I want to get into that. And I think that's what happened when everybody started to come in. Voyager wasn't ready. I'm disappointed that they weren't ready. I am. They should have had this um, all fixed. Now, this comes out and like, hey, we're catching up on our system. We made a bunch of upgrades and here we are. But here's the thing. The question then becomes, is this going to happen again? Because I don't want to hear the same song and dance every single time this, this happens. Oh, there's a big influx. We didn't know. They're not, you are not Coinbase Voyager. You are better than them. You are a broker. There is all these different places out there. that are all the different exchanges that, that you connect to. You are the hotels.com. I understand that that part won't go down. But if you have a bunch of influx of people, get it right now. Get it right now. Even at DanTeachesCrypto.com. It's a 100% free website. I got all the different information out there that you, could, that you probably want as far as like learning about cryptocurrency. It's 100% free. What I did in the beginning is when I talked to the providers, the, the, the server providers, I'm like, look, it's not big now, but it's going to be. So let's just give me the, one of the best packages that you have. It's going to be pricey. I don't care. But I need this to be up the whole time because if it goes down, it's worthless. And that's what happened. So Voyager... They need to do the same thing. Now, as, as it stands right now, this is what they've done. It's still not good enough. So I reached out to Steve Ehrlich, the CEO. I'm like, Steve, man, you got to come on the show. You got to tell us what you guys did, what happened, uh, what's going to happen moving forward, and that's it. Now, I still trust these guys. And if you want to uh, make an investment, bet on people. Steve's one of those guys that's, that's already been around. He, did, he was a CEO of E-Trade, made that into a multi-billion dollar company. He was CEO of, of Lightspeed, made that into a multi-billion dollar company. And here we are with Voyager. I have no doubts, but I need, and I think you need, a little bit of like a little talk and just say, okay, fair is fair. What'd you do? What are you going to do in the future? How are you going to handle it? I don't care what happens as far as things going down. It is how you handle the situation which will define you and the company. And that's how it has always been. And if you hear about my talk about Ledger, Verse, there was another uh, old story about bear aspirin, but you can watch the video. So that's what's going on. We'll have him on today. I got a lot of things going on. I'm also going to be on Alex Mascioli's show, me and uh, Pat Ackerman. We're going to talk about uh, Voyager as well and do a little deep dive. I'll link that later on. But that is what is going on with Voyager. It is up right now. Everything's good. The real question is what they do, how they're going to handle it. All right. So let's jump back to the stories and I can get off my rant. All right. So Robinhood restricts crypto trading due to extraordinary market conditions. What's going on here? Well, Robinhood sucks. And actually, they sent me out this nice little email that said, ah, we're sorry about this, and now trading's coming up, and you can buy GameStop. And I was like, man, I, I sent them a, a response on Twitter and on email. I'm like, I just canceled my, I, I sold everything and I pulled out. 
So Trading App has halted instant deposits for crypto purchase on Friday. Robinhood confirms the move, saying it was switching off instant deposits due to extraordinary market conditions. Extraordinary meaning that their buddies were getting slaughtered and their faces were getting ripped off because they were getting they were shorting GameStop and everybody else came up, came up from uh, Wall Street Bets and said, hey, we're going to buy this stock and have you guys lose big because you've been screwing us for years. And that's what happened. Uh, but it's I, I know, that is what it is. The move comes after Dogecoin and digital coin based on the popular Doge meme spiked as much as 800%. And this was actually on uh, CNBC. And it was a, it's, it's a good minute and a half snippet. I'm not going to play it because they pretty much just said the same thing I just talked about. But there was two things that they said which was interesting. And it proves my point exactly. This market is moved by news and sentiment. This guy, I forgot this guy's name. But uh, he was saying, yeah, this is what happened, GameStop. He goes, also... And you can see the, the price right here, 37.3. That's how much Bitcoin went up because of this small thing that Elon Musk put, hashtag Bitcoin, which is the same thing that Jack Dorsey has. Jack Dorsey, CEO of Twitter and uh, Square, he just has, hash pay, he just has hash, hashtag Bitcoin. I thought that Elon Musk is kind of a funny guy and he kind of does funny things. So I thought that he would, this was just like a joke and he was going to you know, switch it back to see what, just to, just to do it. But it's still there and it's been there for a couple of days. So that's interesting. And then they were talking about that, about how that actually moved the market. And I think it did, because when you have one of the most, um, the richest man in the world, who just became that, uh, and he puts that on his Twitter feed, and that is uh, millions, how many, I don't, how many users, followers does he have? 44 million followers, and they see that. It's pretty good advertising. And you know what else is really great advertising? Robin Hood screwing up. <laughs> that is like the best. That and the Federal Reserve printing money, uh, you, you cannot buy. You can't buy advertising like that. And then at the very end, they talked about, you know, also there was uh, what Ray Dalio said. And uh, Ray Dalio talked about what I really think of Bitcoin. And he's, and he's been a proponent of, of Bitcoin, really not to kind of wish you well, but in this one, he really clears up, clarifies. He goes, this is going to be a fantastic asset. It's going to do really well. And that's what he thought. And uh, they were talking about how it really didn't move the market, but really it was Elon Musk. But you put this together with Ray Dalio, with Robin Hood, with the Federal Reserve, with everything that's going on, you're like, you got a winner. And that's why I think 2021, you couldn't ask for a better year to be into crypto. Like everything just kind of is coming together. Unless we get something crazy like another pan I'm not going to say it, but it's a pretty good year. So anyhow, let me know what you think in the comment section. And uh, let's move on to our next piece. So uh, next up, Ripple. Ripple and CEO Brad Gollinghouse face another lawsuit. Um, this isn't a, here's the story. This is a lawsuit uh, filed Monday in a Florida district court alleges that the sale of XRP crypto tokens to Florida residents violates Florida securities laws. And this is debatable uh, because the SEC is going through that whole process right now to figure out what really XRP is. Now, don't yell at me. I'm just a messenger. There's a lot of different countries out there that has classified XRP as a currency or some other something else. It is only the SEC in America that is uh, questioning the validity and if it is a security. Also, it's not just that, mind you. They're also bringing in Brad Garlinghouse and... Uh, uh, the other owner, I forget, the, the, one of the co-founders, what's his name? Uh, I forget. Uh, they had been, uh, you know, selling a lot of these, of, of their tokens onto the open market. I don't want to get into the debate, which is what, that's what the, the lawsuit is. The suit names Ripple Lab Inc., XRP2 LLC, and Garling House as the defendants. And the plaintiff, this is where it gets interesting. The plaintiff, Tyler Toomey, said he purchased 135 XRP on or around November 24th for 97 bucks and then sold the coins at a loss. The lawsuit states the plaintiff sustained a loss of $48.56, or just over 50% of his initial investment. Although the plaintiff's own loss is small, this is where it's interesting. He seeks to represent a class defined as all persons or entities in the state of Florida who purchased XRP. To me, seeking monetary compensation, reasonable attorney's fees, expenses, and costs of the suit on his own behalf and on behalf of other class members. So, here's the thing. It doesn't matter that amount. It is an insignificant amount, but it could be the initial snowflake that turns into this massive mountain of snow. It's a class action lawsuit. I don't know how many other people are a part of that class action lawsuit, but if you can just bring it forth and then someone else is like, you know what? 
I lost some money. And I know some other people that did, did too. And then you start to see, <laughs> have you ever watched TV late at night? And then you, you see all these advertisements for like uh, mesothelioma. Call us right now. Class action lawsuit. I don't know if they could go that route, but you have to understand that class action lawsuits are, whether they are frivolous or not, they are super expensive. And it doesn't matter who's right or wrong. If you are rippled right now, you were like, damn it, we gotta fight. It's like fighting a war on multi multiple fronts. And you know, if you're, if you're a fan of history, you know that doesn't really work out too well. So if you got a, a battle raging over here with the SEC, then a battle raging here in Florida with a class action lawsuit, then a battle raging over here in other states, you got problems. You got problems because you're shelling out money left and right. And again, what happens to the company? Uh, doesn't look too hot. Now, this is also, to, to finish it all up, um, just like Ripple has always said, even if Ripple, the company goes away, it doesn't matter, XRP will still continue to exist. And that'll be the big test. Will XRP still be out there and still be used if Ripple is gone because they are the third, that'll be the, uh, I guess the intermediary or the person that actually promotes it, which would define the Howey test. I'm not gonna get into that, but again, if Ripple goes away, XRP will still be there. The real question is, will XRP flourish if Ripple, something happens to Ripple, the company? All right, so that's it for today. Uh, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. If you made it this far, hey, why don't you hit a thumbs up? Maybe consider subscribing. That really helped me out a lot. And uh, that is it. Also, Steve will be here today. Uh, but first, check, check us out over at Alex. We're going to talk about, do a little deep dive. But uh, we'll get Steve in here to see what the heck just happened from Voyager. And that's all. So thanks so much. Uh, if you like the types of videos, you two more going to pop up on your left and right. Let YouTube do its magic. And that is it for today. Thanks so much. See you on the next one.